वापस तो मुश्किल आप नहीं भेजते हम कोई और देखेंगे जरूर से सब यूनिवर्सिटियों में बदमाशी है यहाँ पर ज्यादा पुलिस इन्वेस्टिगेट कर रही है यहाँ आज डेप्टी कमिश्नर और आईजी पुलिस डीआईजी और एसएसपी साहब सभी ने विजिट किया है और वो बच्चों से भी मिल रहे हैं उनको खुद जाना चाहिए इस तरह की हरकतें कैसे हो रही हैं कौन कर रहा है ये पूरे एक बच्ची के भविष्य का सवाल होता है with me Maria Shakil our top focus is the fury on the streets of Chandigarh over the leak and circulation of hostile videos shot by a Chandigarh university student the alleged videos were shot in the hostel bathroom by a female student she was caught red handed making videos of 60 girls who were reportedly bathing while another suspect allegedly posted the videos on youtube As per reports the female student who shot the videos is from Mohali and she sent the videos to a male friend living in Shimla both have been arrested along with a third male suspect who also hails from Shimla all three were produced in a Mohali court and sent to 7 days in police remand Pul- uh, reports also uh, suggest that one of the students who was filmed tried to commit suicide once the scandal was exposed The Punjab government has constituted a three member all women special investigation team to probe this matter. Now teaching has been suspended at the university till the 24th of September, but students continue to blame the institute for downplaying the case. Two hostel wardens have been suspended for reportedly not informing the police immediately, while the university maintains there are only rumors of objectionable videos claiming that the preliminary investigation shows The arrested student only sent personal videos to a male friend in Shimla. However, there is a sense of insecurity in the university hostel with many students choosing to leave. While an investigation is underway, the question emerges, is this outrage sparked by misinformation or is the university trying to play down the scandal involving the circulation of videos of young female students joining me on the show shashika is a former dgp of punjab yogita bayana women rights activist we also have ahbab singh garewal he is the spokesperson of the aam aadmi party and two students of chandigarh university toiba and shoredeep are joining us now uh, i'm going to begin with you shoredeep uh, what exactly is the mood like on the campus right now uh now uh, first of all thank you i'm balki uh thanks for inviting me and the campus is uh, are uh, leaving the hostel because uh, we got some 5 to 6 days of holidays until uh, coming sunday so everyone wants to you know uh, get rid of this hostel thing a bit and are just going back to uh, so students are leaving the campus toiba uh, are students really worried particularly the female students because there's still no clarity about those videos where the video was shot or not and what was exactly the nature of video that that female student shared with her male friend yeah maria can you hear me yes i can toiba go ahead uh maria can you hear me yes i can please go ahead loud and clear okay. Okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, see, Mari, I think uh, let's be very decent about it because I think it's not about me or somebody in the you know in Chandigarh University, whether it's Chandigarh University or Delhi University or any other. The story is, I think, the story is all about crime and the criminal. Hmm. But I think what we are talking about is the place where the crime happened, and I think it's not important because we is the crime which needs to be dealt with. We are talking about a girl placing camera in a bathroom. i mean we are not even safe in bathrooms nowadays that is the con- point of concern here because obviously it's not our chancellor sir who came and placed the camera there it's that girl her mentality is the crime it's the criminal that i think needs to be dealt with and uh, yeah i believe we are safe here 
but there are a lot of things going around because university is off for a week and uh, there are a lot of things we are perhaps and have thinking students, about right now. Uh, students left the campus and uh, there were also reports suggesting that there were several students who attempted suicide. What exactly is the truth? Uh, suicide, I, I won't say anything about suicide because I don't think anybody attempted. But yeah, there were panic attacks. A lot of students got panic attacks. Because a lot of students started thinking, maybe it's us, maybe it's my video that got viral, maybe it's my video, um, maybe it's me uh, who has been sh uh, shooted while taking ba while bathing. So yeah, that's what happened exactly. But uh, to some extent, I think university also mishandled it because uh, when we when the students protested the entire night, uh, the next day we expected university at least to condemn it. Yes. Because obviously it's the police who will investigate, not the university. Uh, but instead of that, what happened is that in the morning, uh, there were messages put in WhatsApp groups by the wardens that there is an outing for girls. So it was a very like casual approach. You outing, outing is not a solution for such an issue. Uh, so I think this casual approach made students think that uh, perhaps university is trying to you know avoid the issue. They're trying, uh, sorry, uh, they're trying to hide it. Uh, well, but I think it's too early to talk about it because we should give management and the police time. Uh, which they deserve, I think, because it's it won't happen overnight. I agree, I agree with you. Everything. Did the university really downplay this entire issue, Yogita? Uh, here are students who were anxious, who were worried, and then comes the statement from the university vice chancellor who says that nothing has happened, nothing has gone wrong. The videos that have been, there are no other videos that have been circulated. And that statement came much before the police investigation began. So this is very unfortunate, Maya. Uh, so you know, either it's uh, it's like totally out for everyone to know what is happening, or it's like totally uh, confined to them only. So you know, if they are doing an investigation, they are anyway they are not supposed to dis disclose it. Uh, so whether they found videos or not, they can't be in hurry to declare that. So when it came out that 60 MMS, uh, 60 women have been uh, you know been victim of these MMS. So that it came from somewhere and when we saw that video which was blurred also like this girl is confessing it she said it that's the reason we also raised it through our uh, social media handle keeping her identity intact hmm. it was blurred her name was also not revealed so there was some fire there right it just did not happen from nowhere you know even warden was asking she was feeling sorry about it she was not denying it also hmm. so there was some truth to it so it's not that you can completely deny it here, I would also uh, find her to be a victim herself, you know, more than a perpetrator because, you know, the kind of trap, the kind of nexus it has, uh, the backing of, I think this girl is somewhere uh, the victim of it. So, we need to understand that, yes, she did wrong. I'm not denying that she, she definitely uh, understanding the whole repercussions, she has done it, but we need to go into the depth of it, what provoked her, who is using all this and... And our, uh, our daughters, our girls, our students are not safe in any university. I got a case from Bihar, some uh, district, you know, yes. some case, the similar kind of thing happened, but no action was taken. So at least here, the students, they knew how to raise their voice. They used social media platforms. I retweeted midnight and, you know, it, it's yes. like they... they I agree with you. Them. I agree with you completely on, on, on the fact that the students were pretty... Uh, vigilant, they were seeking answers, but the administration here, Mr. Garival, and, and that's where uh, the role of the government also comes in, has denied that the videos of several women students in the hostel were made and leaked on social media, but the students are not convinced. So what will you do to convince the students? Because they feel that there is some kind of cover up. Why is there a, an attempt to cover up this incident? Uh, Maria, if uh, I can interrupt, sorry, well, can I interrupt just one thing? Yes, Toiba. Yeah. Yes, Toiba. I'm going to yeah, come to you, you, Mr. Said, Greval. Yes, uh, yeah, as you said, yes, they, they must, uh, uh. If, if uh, what I'm saying is that if police still thinks that there was no such thing happened, I think they need to improve the investigation because we're not wrong with what we saw. That's all I would like to say. Yeah, okay. Let him come okay, so you. there are students here who feel that there were recordings, that there was a camera that was placed in the washroom and everything has been recorded, so they have reasons, then why is the administration and the university trying to cover up? Uh, well, ma'am, uh, I'd like to give you some facts here. The fact is that, uh, that, uh, that students, uh, the senior students uh, is an arrest uh, to the 
two perpetrators of this, this, uh, this leak crime are under arrest. Uh, number one. Number two, uh, all that has come out of the forensic examination is, number one, that there were videos, and there were videos of one particular girl. Hmm. The key of it, not, I would not like to get into uh, any, kind of, a, any kind of argument on that, because that's a, that's a matter of uh, investigation. But still now, everything, everything that has come in front of all the investigators is that this one particular girl sent a video to a guy who I will not call her boyfriend because he obviously wanted to destroy the situation. So number one is that. Number two, to the students and to everybody else, I'd like to reassure them that the Punjab government has constituted in SIT with three very senior female IPS officers who will, who we, we hope, who will make you secure enough to come and uh, give out your anxiety or your fears. And for the children, we are with you. And, uh, you I, I'm not too sure children. if Toyba and Shwaradeep are convinced. Shwaradeep, Shwaradeep, let, 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 let me come to you first. There is this sense and anxiety among students like Toyba and rightly so, uh, rightly so because there is this general sense that there, there is more to what is being cited as rumours. Then who instigated this entire right. thick cloud that spread to such a level in which students were on the streets protesting? So, is it a question No, I, I, I strongly believe that, uh, you know, we all are uh, ma a maximum of the students uh, at Chandigarh University belongs to various other states and territories, and even we have 90 plus, you know, uh, international uh, nations from where students come. So it's kind of a more panic thing. And now, you know, in this digital world full of WhatsApp, this that, uh, so news, you know, spreads like wild wildfire. So you so still feel this, feel this was that, panic. You know, uh, it's kind of a panic uh, that situation at midnight, especially. Uh, and uh, I, I strongly believe that the authorities should have taken proper, you know, steps right then. They hmm. should have come front of that. Could they have handled it better? Could efforts been made by yeah. the DGP and others to speak to the students, convince them that, you know, the footage that is there online is of a different nature? Uh, but Toyba is not convinced. Even right now, she feels that it was more than just rumor or a panic. Toyba, you heard from the uh, Amadi yeah, Party yeah. spokesperson as well. Uh, yeah, see, see, see. Uh, the basic thing is that it's not important whether they convinced us or not. We are just protesters or somebody who are fighting for somebody else. So whether we are protesting or not, the thing is you still have to fight with this crime. You have to, you have to put the uh, criminal behind the bars and you have to do it at any cost. Hmm. I mean, it's. I feel ashamed. Why would I tell you that? What What's your duty as police or DGP, whatever? It's your responsibility to to do it. No, but Toyba, it's not me. Why would I tell you that? No, abhi abhi jo Amadi Party ke spokesperson hai, Bab, unka hmm. kehna hai, ye pura rumor tha. Jaise abhi tak jo investigation nahin, hua hai. Nahin, Bab, bolne diye na, mujhe bhi Bab kabhi diye. Maine 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 Abab, Abab Grewal, please make your point yes. clear. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. What I have not said that this was a rumor. Tha. Hmm. I have not ah, said that the kids are wrong. Ma'am, let me finish. Ma'am, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm saying that there was an incident and this girl, the girl who is under arrest, I would rather think of her as a victim because she has been victimized by probably two guys. And I, I, I feel bad for that poor girl because she's being like a victim in this whole thing. Number one, if, he, if she's done something wrong, she will be brought to go. Now, what I want to reiterate here, ma'am, is if there has been any kind of lapse on the part of the university establishment, they will be brought to book. The police has been on its toes. The Punjab government has constituted an SIT, which, which is an all-female SIT, so that the, the, the girl children are, are comfortable to say whatever they want to, and they are comfortable to express all whatever whatever kind of facts that they want to bring in. Okay. Yes, it's an international Shashi university Kanji. with lots of kids, but we want to protect them. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Shashi Kanji, what do you think uh, the direction of investigation as far as you're seeing till now, where is the Punjab police going wrong? Well, to start with, I think I'll salute this young co-panelist. I couldn't get her name. She has been absolutely on the mark. Toyba. 
and now coming to the facts that you're asking for, hmm. this particular thing has been mishandled right from the very beginning. The administration had not taken any measures, any steps to ensure adequate privacy as also adequate protection and dignity and entire thing as per the as per the law. When I'm talking of law, I'll talking about the education policy of the government of India. When they talk about the universities and mm. institutions, they talk about what kind of security, what kind of things are to be made available to the girls' hostels. I don't know whether they had done it. Number two, talking about this university. Mm. This particular hostel was supposed to be a boys' hostel. And the security norms and all those norms with respect to the boys and the girls are absolutely different. That's right. Apparently, university had not taken any steps. Now, coming to the police, and of course, to my dear friend, Mr. Abab Gill. The, everybody has been saying that, okay, it was one video, two video, whatever it is. My contention is, my, my view is that n n even the SSP of Mohali should not have spoken about it. Just, he should have said that the entire, all the gadgets have been sent to the forensic uh, laboratory and that is the view that is their results will be their an examination and report will be absolutely authentic and we'll go as per that and that's where the entire this rumor mongering started that this is there this was there this was there still nobody knows what exactly was the situation next this evening i was on certain other channel hmm. they said sending your own pictures is not an offense what the hell Indian law says that any kind of this kind of, uh, Why does uh, it... sorry, I'm going to use a better word, texting is uh, sort of, uh, uh, it's not permitted, it's not legal. Yes. And lastly, now that the commission has been established, uh, I mean, our SIT has been there, Gurpreet is a fantastic officer. I'll give all her points. I give all my points to Gaurav. Hmm. Good officer, very good boy he is, yes. But again, Talking about the Aam Aadmi Party, had they not taken any action, and I'll request them not to indulge in sort of a uh, guessing game, because this kind of things can topple their government. You know, there have been reactions in Bangalore. You know, there have been reac reactions in Delhi. You know that there have been reactions yeah, so in so many overall, other parts of the, the country. Overall, on Mr. This Shashi Khan has highlighted where the investigation has gone wrong. Yes. yes. Did the police come to jump the gun in jumping to conclusion? Yes, they did. did is there a cover-up by the university? The students feel it is. So all these questions have to be answered. For the moment, the Ahmadi party government seems to be in rush to say that all's well. The students are panicking. But they have reasons to panic. That is the reason why somebody like Toiba has been raising questions and she has not got answers here. Uh, yeah, um, so Maria, the thing is that uh, I heard the debate. So what I think is that the main point is that victim herself confessed she did it. So I think topic should end her case closed. She said she did it, done. But yet, if you think it's a rumor, you want to, uh, you want to investigate it, please do it. We are giving you your time and you deserve your time. We're not saying that police should do it overnight or we don't expect university to do it overnight. Condemnation, that's all we expect. Take your time. But, no, but even no, after taking no, time, no, no, no. If I, I, have, comes... I have a problem with that approach. Does it stop at condemnation? I mean, the university is sad about it. That's what the, the vice chancellor, the, the pro chancellor said. So I'm not convinced about it. I'm asking that students Madhya, such as yeah. you, students who Ma are on campus, are yes, they yes, worried Madhya. that was, of all the 60 clips that have been allegedly leaked or there is misinformation? Who started uh, the yes. misinformation first? And if there are those clips, then who has those clips? See, Maria, nobody is sure who has those clips, but there are certain girls who actually started it, who saw it in their phones, and they told other girls about the same. And that is how it started. Rest about condemnation, which you asked. I want to clarify. Condemnation is a question yoga, but the thing is that our university administration can't investigate. It's the job of the police. But at least they can condemn it. Yes, we are with you, dear students, and we will investigate it. And we'll give them their time. And if they still aren't doing anything, then we have the right to protest and they can't stop us. Okay. So the right to uh, protest, will you continue to exercise it? Will there be more protests? Or have the students gone back because the university is shut now? 
protest will protest will only stop once the criminal is put behind the bars if not protest will continue okay. oh, that is the whole thing hmm. see see uh, maria i was just trying to say in between that the government will definitely try to cover up the, he is he started his conversation by saying that it is a rumor and this is my second debate with mr grewal where he is saying it's a rumor so without investigation it's a rumor for him anyways coming to the well being welfare of of the students which we have been only uh, concern about it right now because they are panicking their anxieties are genuine you know it's not that they are faking it or something like you know it's just uh, they are doing it to get attention it is genuine any any women will go through this so rather than atten giving attention to them none of their representative their cm is abroad it's okay chalo he is flying and he is flying high or wherever he is what about the other ministers what about the other mps mlas from their parties uh, party who ha who has reached out to them who has gone and reinstilled the confidence in them that okay we are there for you okay and tell us the problem and nothing will go wrong the you know their concern is that the mms it will become a chain and it will spread is there any authority reached out to them and told them that we we ensure that this will not happen that they have to ensure that otherwise their panic uh, panic attacks and anxiety levels will be high you have to do that and thank god there is no suicide if there is no suicide i don't know yet it is again we don't know it's a gray area thank god but for that you need to really work on it you need to talk to yes. them you need to abab singh abab singh yes. quickly and then i'll give the final words for the two students <laughs> Match quickly. First of all, I'm glad the students are much, much more mature than I would have thought. Thank you, kids. Number one, the government is with you. The police is with you. Number one, this will be investigated thoroughly. I promise you. If the university is at fault, they will be brought to book. I promise you. That girl is a victim, and thank you, Swaiba, for calling him, calling her what she is. She's a victim. And if those two boys have done this, of course. Okay. And uh, ma'am, ma just a minute. Yogita ji was is on the second debate. She offered help. She said she could send a bunch of psychiatrists all over yes. to Punjab to give counselling all over colleges. Ma'am, you are welcome. Please send over whoever you want to. We will have seminars all over yes. Punjab. Okay. Good. Maybe so. Can, so so Yogita and and Abhab Singh Grewal can not, can coordinate yes. on this uh, after oh, my oh, debate. Please, uh, uh, Shwarid uh, Shwaridip and Toyba. Shwaridip, are the male students standing with female students in this fight? Yes, uh, absolutely. We are with the female students, and uh, I strongly believe that justice hurried is justice buried, and justice delayed is justice denied. So, uh, of course, it will take time, and uh, we promise, as being uh, male, so-called, we will stand with each and every female and student of Chandigarh University, and we will fight. Okay, fine. That's that's needed. That's needed, that's needed certainly. Toyba. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. My as Shoradeep said, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. That's exactly correct. But we are giving university time. We will wait for the criminal to be put under bars. If it didn't happen, then we'll protest again. And and Maria, just I think I just uh, it a, a suggestion from my side. I think you should have called somebody from the university administration in the debate to we see what is their point of view. We were trying to get in touch with them. They did not respond. So we were hoping they, we were hoping that students will be able to. confront somebody from the university because the answers are being sought from punjab government mm -hmm. from punjab police and from chandigarh university really appreciate your time toyba shoradeep abab singh grewal uh, yogita and mr shashikant shifting focus to our second debate and this is a global debate that has erupted over the hijab Early after Modi came to the power, he started many reforms among them. There are some people who force hijab, and they say that it is a, a, a Islamic practice, a vote bank politics that has been there, and they are they are the people who are supporting for the hijab. The latest flashpoint is the nation of Iran, once a beacon of secularism and liberal values. the people of this country have been under the iron fist of theocracy 
for over 40 years. Protests have erupted in the country after 22-year-old Mahasa Amini died after she was arrested by the country's moral police. Her crime, that she did not cover her head properly, or just a part of her hair was showing. Is that really a big crime? While in custody, she slipped into a coma and passed away at the hospital. The morality police says she suffered a heart attack while in custody, but reports suggest she was assaulted for not following Islamic rules in public. She was humiliated is, the, is what the footage is suggesting. This has lit a fire across Iran and around the world, where Iranian women removed and even burned their hijabs in protest, cut their hair as well. While this is an opposition to theocracy, which tramples on the rights of women and minorities in India, the fight is between religious expression and the regulation of educational institutions. The hearing continued in the Supreme Court today, where the counsel for the petitioners argued that students who are not dealing with military schools should be given the religious freedom to express their faith. The counsel argued that just like turbans for Sikhs, hijab is important for Muslim women, similar to somebody who wants to wear a tilak or a cross. This argument is flawed though. This argument deals with the point of contention raised by the Karnataka High Court back in March when it ruled that wearing a hijab is not an essential religious practice in Islam and thus is not protected under Article 25 of the Constitution. So in the wake of the tragedy and outrage in Iran, where does the needle move here in India? Are the women of Iran sending a message to us, sending a message to all those who are protesting for hijab in the state of Karnataka? Joining me on the show, Daria Safai is a member of parliament of Belgium. She joins me from Brussels. We also have Masi Ali Nijad. She's an Iranian journalist and activist joining me from New York City. We have Amina Sherwani, women's rights activist. Saida Falak is a leader of MIM. And we'll also be joined by Mursal Nurzai in just a bit. Masi, I'm going to begin with you. Many would say that this is a moment where women have called to say that enough is enough in Iran. What are you picking up from the ground? Is Masa Amini's killing almost like a turning point for women in Iran in their fight against hijab? I strongly believe that the brutal death of Masa Amini, the way that she was murdered by Iranian regime, now it's a turning point for Iranian women because Iranian women are fed up. They don't think that Mahsa is going to be last one. You know, for years and years, Iranian women get lashed, get bitten up in the street, harassed, jailed, kicked out from school, university, everywhere, just because of showing a little bit of their hair. Can you believe that? This is 21st century. Yes. And when Mahsa was arrested, then she went in a coma. People were just furious, furious, because she was not even participating in any protest. She was just, uh, you know, a young woman full of life, ambition, kind-hearted person. She had a lot of dream, and she didn't do anything wrong to deserve to be murdered by a uh, hijab police in Iran. That is why Iranian women now are taking to the street alongside men and chanting against the whole regime. They're saying enough is enough. Yes. And I hope more and more women join in this fight and say enough is enough. Masi, is this happening throughout Iran, throughout the country, or are these protests limited only in certain pockets? Look, Mahsa is a Kurdish girl. So the, the city of Saqqaz is full of anger. People came to the street, first from her home city, Saqqaz, then Sanandaj took to the street, then Tehran. Now that I'm talking to you students in Amir Kabir University, Beheshti University, Tehran University, they are in the street. You, you can see the videos that how they are being uh, attacked by security forces. Look, let me tell you something. Iranian regime made a video clip 
to uh, show the rest of the world that they didn't bitten up Mahsa Amini. But how ironic right now, uh, the security forces bit up people in the street, open fire at peaceful protesters to convince them that they didn't bitten up Mahsa. So you see bitting people, killing them, torturing them is in the DNA of the Islamic Republic. Now women and men alongside each other, they take to the street, women remove their hijab and men supporting them because they believe that if they keep silent, then more women will be uh, the victim of the Islamic Republic. The main slogan in the street is death the dictator. They even uh, call the Islamic Republic like an ISIS. They say that Islamic Republic is our ISIS. And they are right. Look, as a girl from the age of seven, if you don't cover yourself, you won't be able to go to school. You won't be able to get a job. You won't be able to, to live, to exist. You know, I'm for freedom of choice and I cannot believe that Mahsa, young woman got killed just because of wanting uh, to choose her own lifestyle. This is unfair and the world might, must show their solidarity with Iranian women right now. Yes, and the world is standing with the Iranian women right now as we see those visuals of resistance coming in from across Iran. Um, Amina, what will you tell those girls who were fighting for hijab when the university said or the school said, go wear a uniform? That was more about their choice. Telling them that don't be buried uh, under what is a forced symbol of patriarchy. Yes, and we must learn from the experience of the Iranian women. I, this is what I said that for five generations, women of my family and men of my family have fought against Parda. Our constitution also invokes us. The Quran also tells us that men and women have to wear their beautiful adornments, meet each other, choose partners and mates from among each other. There is no Parda in Islam from where have they invented this? Hmm. Where have they put it upon women? And how extreme have they become from modest dressing to complete covering of a woman till all she has is this one eye through which she she is able to walk. I do not understand from where this is coming. Mm. And how are these young girls in Karnataka going to the Supreme Court where we go to get justice? They are going to get injustice. They are demanding injustice from the Supreme Court. And I don't know how the Supreme Court can ever agree to this injustice. Look at our constitution. Look at the Quran. There is nothing Islamic about hiding. As Muslim women, we are to be brave like the Iranian women are today. We are to participate in public life. We are to shape public life, not just participate. We are to shape it. That is what our mandate is as Muslim women and which is what I'd like to tell these daughters of mine. Almost even my granddaughters, I would say that please get your facts right. Islam is about freedom and liberty. Our constitution is about freedom and liberty. Both of them are in consonance with each other and learn from the mistake of the Iranian women. Iran celebrated its Islamic revolution thinking they have done a great thing and they are fighting against the West and they are showing the world what Islam is and look at where they have yes. ended up. Let us not tread that path. There is, there is nothing, there is no way but to be democratic, but to be liberal and but to look forward. There is no other way for any of us, be it Iran or be it India. Yes, and, and uh, liberal values should not be linked to hijab because if anything, it is about accepting that if you're entering a space which, is, which respects a particular culture or if you have, if you have entered a school which please is run by Christians, the then learn to wear the uniform. I can see my, 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 my fourth guest, Saida Falak as well. Saida Falak, I'm going to come to you, but let me get a word from Daria. Daria, uh, you have put out a number of tweets talking about you standing in solidarity with women who are chanting women, life and freedom. How much of a tectonic shift is this, uh, according to you, for women in Iran and for women all over the world in general? I, I think it's a very important fight for women's rights. And this is not only about Iranian women. As you told, it's just all around the world. 
just recognizing that um, uh, that covering the women's are the wrong thing for their futures, for their emancipations. And this is what is going on in Iran. In mm -hmm. Iran, before the Islamic Revolution of 1979, Iranian women were free to wear whatever they want. But whenever the Islamic ideology takes the both uh, takes the the rule of the things, then it changes to oppression of the women to covering themselves, and this is what we are the, we are seeing in uh, Iran. The the nowadays, it's already such a long time, almost 44 years, that the Iranian women are fighting for their uh, rights and also for uh, putting their headscarves out. But every time that they uh, try to show something uh, about this um, uh, freedom, they will be beaten, they will be just like um, killed, like Masa Amini has recently had. And you know, this is a very long um, fight and it has not been supported from the world media. And this is the time that we should know about the young lives like Masa Amini, only 22 years old, in 21st century is just uh, killed or the regime of Iran or the Ayat uh, because of the Ayatollahs, uh, only because she didn't wear her headscarf properly or completely covering her, her hair, it's unacceptable. And it should Absolutely. not be quite... It oh, is uh, it is completely oh, unacceptable, and world. we are hoping that likes of Saida Falak will also stand up and say that this, you know, kind of radicalization and Islamization, which we are seeing in the Islamic Republic of Iran, has led to that kind of killing. A young girl is killed, all of 22. What was a crime? Just a Part of See, hair what happened with that 22-year-old girl is wrong, but other than that, what is happening in Iran uh, is not our concern. We have many other important issues that needs to be discussed, uh, and I think uh, Iran have their own law, their own uh, rules, and our country is a lot different from them. Gee. We have our own rules and we absolutely. have our own law. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree with the, you. We are uh, in a, in a democracy, and, and and Iran is not. That is the reason why Saida. I am of the opinion that people like you should mm -hmm. also raise their voice and not force young girls who are under 18 to wear hijab because that's not an exercise See, of choice then at that age. Year, they are not year, exercising choice. Let me, they are being forced year, by their parents. Nobody is being forced here in India. We are not forcing any girl to wear hijab. It is her choice and I think uh, 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 in fact, uh, girls are being forced to remove their hijab. They are being forced to choose between hijab and kitab. They are being denied their right to education. They are not being allowed in the classes just because they wear a piece of cloth on their head. That is what is happening. Nobody is forcing them to wear it. No, no, but, but you are making this a choice. You are making it a choice only because it's a convenient narrative. It is convenient for you to make it a choice. Why make it a choice at all? Education is priority. Education is what leads to girls feeling empowered. Isn't that what of the course, purpose of life is? Of course, education is a priority, but also our religion is our priority. Uh, one and where in religion it is... Of the other? No, no. Yes. I'm, okay, because Saida, where in religion is it mentioned to wear a hijab? We have told n number of times that hijab is mentioned in Quran, in Surah Hijab Umbu, is Surah not Leza, an essential Surah religious Leza. practice. There are five yes, pillars of Islam essential. and hijab is not. Amina will respond. Madam, Amina. Other than that, other than the five pillars, nothing is the uh, word hijab is is a, yes? The word hijab is a wall. It is a screen. It is not a it women's clothing item. It means it partition. It is not mentioned it is not a, by the Quran that women wall. have to wrap bandages around partition their Partition between two people. Women partition between have two been things. given total freedom. Yes, so the men can wear tents and roam around. We can lock up the men inside walls. That is what the Quran says, that lock up no, the men. No, they have they to the practice the job ones. by lowering the It does case. not tell women. It does not tell women. It, it does not tell women to, to cover themselves at all in garments and, and wrap themselves. Men, to, you know, follow the hijab by men have themselves. to lower their gaze. 
and this was the practice in India that women would roam without any parda and the men would walk with their gazes lowered and the women would say hello to the men. They would say hello Chacha Jan if their Chacha was going, then Chacha Jan would lift his head. Otherwise, men would face the wall and stand quite literally. That was the tradition. That is what Islam Muslim tells men. So you will lower your gaze and you will look at the wall. Years, right? If there is a mixed if crowd, then men will face that the wall. That is what the hijab was. If they believe no, Muslim that women cannot go about believing the whatever they feel like right believing, Sayyid right? Falak. Muslim women have to follow the Quran and the Quran tells them to be free. Yes, the we Quran are following the Quran and you are not following it. You don't know anything about their Quran. Partners. Please the Quran be tells them to educate themselves. The Quran tells them to work. The Quran tells them to earn. The Quran tells them to be fearless. The Quran tells them to change society for the better. The Quran does not tell them to wrap themselves in black garments or pink garments or white garments. You don't have the right to cover themselves. And they do not. They do not, the Quran does not tell us to cover ourselves and hide Nobody away from society. Nobody is going to listen to you. It tells men to behave themselves. Yes. Nobody is going to listen to you. You are not a Muslim. Women in Iran, women in Iran are burning yeah. their hijab only because hmm. they realize that it is a symbol of oppression right now. Masha See, Amini lost it is her not life for their lives. Only it is not a concern. Because, it, because okay. there was this me, moral me police which it said be, that she should be covered it, fully. Who decides for her? It cannot be a symbol of oppression because it is just a piece of cloth. How can a piece of cloth be a symbol of oppression? It covers our head, not our brains. Please understand that. Oh. It doesn't cover our brain. It just covers our head. It quite literally has How covered our brains. How can a piece of cloth be a symbol of oppression? What else it has covered? Yes, it can be a symbol of oppression. Women are being killed and murdered for it. Women are being forced that is into wrong. it. Women are told you are bad women. The murder you do not of wear that girl is wrong. That pressure is there the even in that India. Is wrong, that pressure the is there even in India. You the are putting that different. pressure. OVC is would, putting that pressure. The Maulanas are putting that pressure. It began very innocently in different. Iran. And choice. look at the proportions that it has we taken. To it began as an innocent piece of cloth. Okay, that it has become okay, a murder okay, let's, now. Let's, let's put it focus. is used to murder women. Yes, because, because very women lethal, of Iran are showing the way. They are telling other women that what you saw for long as a symbol of oppression, you can burn it and say, you are free now. That's what has happened. Because they have refused to take it anymore. They are saying enough is enough. Daria, since you are a member of parliament and uh, women like you can mobilize other politicians as well, will there be a stronger message that will be sent uh, by the political class? The reason why I'm saying is that many saw that uh, MBS is a very progressive leader. Why is he silent? So the question is, why are all those leaders who were seen as progressive, they were standing for rights of Muslim women in the respective countries, why are they silent today? That is the problem of nowadays of uh, people uh, who are defending um, something like this by being silent, because being silent a sort of showing that I am okay with it. And it's a pity because who uh, calls himself or himself uh, uh, as a progressive cannot be silent of this uh, regressive uh, way of life, which Ayatollahs now are uh, moving in Iran. They killed a young girl. Just look at your uh, conscience and talk about her, her life, her blood could not go for nothing. Make a revolution, Absolutely. not only in Iran, Absolutely. but in your thoughts and the way that Islam uh, uh, treats treats the women. Just make a revolution in it because otherwise it doesn't work. Being progressive and silent, being silent about that big problem, I cannot combine them together. A real progressive is a, a person talks about those problems and find a solution who shows that uh, if he or she find it Masi, disgusting that Masi, in 21st since century, I'm sure, a young yes. girl. That, uh, one moment. Masi, since I'm sure you're in touch with several women, uh, scholars, activists on ground, are you sensing that this uh, protest that we are seeing, will this really die down? 
or or will this continue and uh, w what is the general sense there that uh, uh, is this almost like uh, arab spring a moment for the women in iran where they see thing can change drastically from here onwards for them look when you are forced to wear hijab from the age of 7 when you don't have any choice then what does it mean it means that when this small piece of cloth is in the hand of taliban or islamic republic it's like a chain around our neck so i don't see hijab as a choice i'm not against my mom who uh, you know traditionally wear hijab and she's not bitting off people in the street and force them to wear it i'm not against her I'm for freedom of choice, but women in Iran and Afghanistan, they get lashes. So for that, I, I would love to say that to the rest of the world that hijab is, a, hijab is not a choice until every woman can make decision over their own body. When millions of girls in Iran, Afghanistan, they get kicked out from school, they're being harassed, they're being tortured for not having a choice, then I don't think that we can say hijab is a choice. Now, to millions of women in the Middle East, this became a symbol of oppression, the most visible symbol of oppression. And most important than this, compulsory hijab is the main symbol of religious dictatorship. Compulsory hijab is the main symbol of ISIS, the Islamic Republic, and Taliban. So for me and millions of women, hijab is not a choice. It's just a tool to oppress us, to control us. It's it. My body became like a platform for Islamic Republic and Taliban or ISIS. They wrote their own ideology on my body. And then they tell me, hey, woman, you have to show the rest of the world this is Islamic State. We don't want to carry the Islamic ideology on our body. Yes. That's the point. And that is why um, what you see in Iran, it's a women revolution. Against it's a women revolution. Dictatorship. It's a women revolution. If in uh, Afghanistan it is Taliban which is forcing hijab, and in Islamic Republic of Iran it is the Republic which is enforcing hijab, here it is PFI which is trying to do so. Let's not forget that Saida. The PFI links to the entire hijab protest is out in public domain. See, nobody is forcing here. It was the BJP government who created the uh, issue, you know, who created this issue. And, uh, you know, uh, nobody is involved. Nobody is forcing anyone. No, no, just, it is just the agenda of BJP government to PFI. target the minority. The PFI links to the oh, yeah. job oh, yeah. protest girls, girls, like girls out in the public women domain. Women girls so I think as like, in India, like we uh, criticize and condemn India, their own choices. Islamization, no is we condemn ISIS, we Islamist. condemn Taliban, we should condemn PFI for the role they are playing in oppressing women. Who is oppressing women? Absolutely. How are they oppressing women? See, uh, hijab-wearing women, uh, hijab-wearing girls have been to schools from hundreds of years in in, uh, in India. Hmm. All of a sudden, why this ban? From years, those girls no, are wearing no, hijab no, in schools. Not, not at all, all for hundreds of years. For hundreds of years, years, girls have Muslim been going to schools the and colleges have been without hijab. burqas and without hijabs in India. Years. This is a Mus recent Muslim 15 women year old phenomena. For hundreds of years, Muslim girls have been wearing dresses and yes. going. Sayyida Falak herself has been wearing karate clothes and doing karate in of India. For hundreds of years, before. Muslim girls I'm have been participating now. in life what, without what hijabs. Now? Hijab yes. does not exist in it Islam. Is, it did not see, exist see, in see. India. It is From a bad copy years, of some Arabic practice. And it it is not part of our culture. It is not part of our country. And it is not part of our religion. It is an invention. Right? By Sayyada or Falak and her party, it is an invention by PFI, by the Maulana lobby to, to bring women down, to control women. Do we want to wear hijab does not How exist in Islam. Us? Covering of no women right doesn't us. exist in Islam. No right it just does not you exist no right in Islam at all. I have all the right to talk. I have all the right to talk. I have all the right to talk. You and know, hijab is a no non-entity right in Islam. To, it doesn't uh, exist. We women exist. Our rights exist. But 
covering us up with hijab is not part of Islam. It is un-Islamic to cover women up in hijab. It is Islam. Our freedom is Islamic. Is Our right to education is Islamic. Our right to do judo karate is Islamic. Our right to do business is Islamic. There is no right to hijab in Islam. There is no right to hijab in Islam. Islam tells you not to wear. Islam, the Quran, you don't listen to me, you listen to the Quran. The Quran says do not wear hijab. Thank you so much for joining us. We are slipping into a short break. After that, Britain's longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, funeral took place in London. The Queen's coffin was taken to Westminster Abbey, accompanied by King Charles, his sons, grandchildren and siblings. She has been laid to rest at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. Sat 